Hey, welcome to part two of my vibrato tutorials. Are you ready for this? It's violin time. Hey, I'm Lin Kuo, and I'm founder of Violin with Dr. Lin, where I coach motivated violinists how to conquer their instrument and conquer their fears on stage. Thanks for joining me for my part two of my vibrato tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check that out right here. I covered the top five vibrato mistakes that I see in violins and violas. If you haven't seen it, click right here to see that right now. In this video, I'm going to be covering the exercises that I practice to improve my vibrato. And vibrato is one of the five elements of sound production that we need to keep on top of to develop and beautify our sound. The other four elements I will cover in a future video. V, A, P, P, S. V is part of the equation and what we're going to talk about today. So with vibrato, we have to keep in mind that there's amplitude of vibrato, wide and narrow. There is also speed. Speed and amplitude are a function of each other. The wider the vibrato, usually the slower the vibrato. The narrower the vibrato, the faster the vibrato. With that said, however, you can combine a wide vibrato with a very fast speed, which creates a very intense vibrato, or you can have, or you can have a very narrow vibrato with a slow speed. A narrow vibrato with a slow speed would sound very appropriate for something soft and beautiful. It produces a very beautiful and mellow sound. If you want a very wide vibrato with very fast speed, it's appropriate for very juicy repertoire. So we're going to cover the exercises that I use to develop flexibility in the finger joints. Now vibrato really comes from an entire awareness of the entire arm as we talked about in my part one video. Now, the flexibility that is most important in, in vibrato is in the distal joint, the last joint in the finger. If there is very little flexibility in the edge, the end of this finger, then our vibrato will be limited in its amplitude and flexibility. So how do we improve this flexibility? There are many different exercises. So the first one that I like to do is very classic. Many teachers teach this. It's what I will call the ambulance exercise. Now, if you remember in my part one video, I talked about the hand print, printing the hand onto the instrument to prevent mistakes learning the vibrato. So once we have the hand print, then we can go on to an ambulance like exercise. Doesn't sound very fun, but it is very, very useful. When you roll the fingertip, and what you can do is actually imagine that the, the, the shape of your finger is kind of like a ball, and you're literally rolling on the ball. For those of you who are a little bit older, if you remember Weeble Wobbles, the dolls with round bottoms and they rocked on the bottom, that's what I'm thinking of when I think of the ambulance exercise. Rolling on this fingertip. I find this exercise makes me very aware of how much amplitude I can get and how much distance I can cover from one end of the fingertip to the other. So that's the ambulance exercise. The second vibrato exercise that I like to practice is what I call the cool hang. For this, I recommend that you get... Okay, here we got the cloth. The reason is because we are going to hang the fingers on the edge of the instrument. I personally don't like to put my dirty paw prints onto my varnish. So I'm just going to feed this through here. 
There we go. Now, just to protect the surface of my instrument. I know, it looks funny. So from here, I've got my thumb underneath here. I'm just going to hang my fingers on the, the body of the instrument, the shoulder here. With my right hand, I'm supporting, I'm helping to support the instrument up. Okay. And then I'm just going to park all my four fingers here and try to feel that the arm, the elbow is really heavy and the fingers are literally hanging, or the arm is hanging from the fingers on the instrument. From here, you can try to wiggle. What you're wiggling here is not the weird wiggle that I talked about in video one, which is this bending of the wrist or rotation of the wrist. This is the ulna arm bone. I'm consciously uh, bending from the elbow, the ulna arm bone, which opens and closes, opens and closes. Now, bear in mind that the entire hand structure is sitting on top of this bone. So what this is doing is the arm bone is carrying the hand back and forth, back and forth, while the fingers are perched on top. So we are taking, we are carrying this hand on top of the arm bone. It's hanging literally. I'm just going to wiggle. This is an incorrect wiggle, but we're going to wiggle the entire arm structure using my right hand to support. This is going to be helpful if you want to develop more of an arm like vibrato as opposed to a wrist like vibrato. Okay, that's more of a wrist vibrato. And then if I want to do an, an arm vibrato, I would try to go from here. So there you can just wiggle and then you can transfer that to the instrument. So that's where I practice this kind of movement here. And that comes from something like this exercise. The third vibrato exercise that I like to practice is one that I think kids like. And this is what I call washing the string. Literally, you put your fingers on any string you like, let's say the G string for now, and you're just going to wash as if you're washing the string with your fingertip. You're traveling the length of the string up and down. And with your bow, it sounds rather funny. That's why I think kids would like it. And I'm literally using a very light finger pressure, all just almost like a harmonic finger pressure. You can experiment with the speed, slow to fast. And as you notice, when you go faster, the amplitude gets narrower. So slow is wide. And as you can see, I'm creating a very flexible wrist, as well as minding the flexibility in the ulna as well as trying to think of flexibility and relaxation in the shoulder area. And as you get faster, it gets narrower, and maybe you add a bit of pressure on the finger, and there you see it becomes a real vibrato. And whenever I get tight when I'm playing, I go back to this wash the string exercise to remind myself to loosen both the hand pressure, the finger pressure on the string. It just reminds me to be loose. It also reminds me to be loose in the thumb, as you will remember in my first video about the golden horseshoe. Now, there's also what, what I like to think of as a vertical component to this exercise. As you can see, it's more of a horizontal motion going up and down the string horizontally. Now, when you add to that, vibrato is not just horizontal. There is an element of vertical. And what I mean by that is there, there is a depression of the string down to the fingerboard, up and down, up and down, up and down. If there was no pressure, Now I'm adding a little bit of pressure. There is greater pressure on the upper part of the vibrato and lesser pressure, lesser pressure on the lower part of the pitch. 
More on that in the next exercise. The next four exercises are from Simon Fisher's Warming Up book. The first exercise I give my own name. He calls it more pressure and less pressure. And for me to remember it better, I call it the finger roll. And the reason why it's called less pressure and more pressure, I'll show you. Simon Fisher talks about more pressure, less pressure. He demonstrates with his hand here. The finger is rolling and applying a bit more finger pressure. When it goes below pitch, it relaxes in its finger pressure. So at the top of the vibrato is when there's a bit more pressure on the string. And when you move down from the vibrato, there's less pressure. So da, ya, 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 ya. on the instrument, it looks like this. On the instrument, it looks like this. Top of the note, there's more pressure, less pressure, almost harmonic pressure. You can practice this at quarter equals 90 on the metronome, and this is how it would sound in different rhythms. The second vibrato exercise from Simon Fisher's Warming Up is what I have called the knuckle collapse. This one is training the flexibility of the distal joint of each finger. This is probably the most important knuckle to develop flexibility in for vibrato. Now, it's funny because I've actually tried to do vibrato on this side of, on, on the other side of the other hand, just to see how difficult it is to train flexibility. And there is a bit of difference between the right side and the left side. So how you do this exercise is to collapse the knuckle. So here, Again, you can put the metronome on quarter equals 90 and try your best. It gets really hard on the fourth finger. The third Simon Fisher exercise is what I like to call the hook. Simon Fisher calls it Pinocchio's nose. What he means is that you're pulling and pushing the hand close and far away from the neck of the instrument. So how that looks, if this is a good angle, is if your hand is, what is the best angle? Uh, trying to find the best angle. Your hand is close, like a hook. This is why I call it the hook. Your hand is very close to the neck and then pulls away. And Simon Fisher calls this Pinocchio's nose because you're literally pulling the finger away as if it's Pinocchio's nose. And as you do that, you're allowing the joints to be responsive and flexible. So. I won't try to play it now, but this is what it would look like. This and this, this and this, this and this, this and this. Open and closing. All fingers. You can try any position. Close as possible, farther as possible. Close as possible, far as possible. You can even do it on a double stop. Let's see over here. Pinocchio's nose and back. Pinocchio's nose and back. The fourth exercise from Simon Fisher's warming up is what I have called the wheel. And it's a circular motion. And the circular motion is, is a circle drawn towards your face as if it's climbing up 
and coming towards your face, climbing up and coming towards your face and pulling back. So this can be practiced very, very slowly. You're pulling away and back up towards your face. When you are towards your face is when you are at your destination pitch. And when you are, when you have pulled the pitch away is when there is least, the least amount of pressure on the string. Almost like harmonic pressure. And then becomes real pressure as you're closer to your face. Now, as you increase the speed of this rotating wheel, your circle will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes infinitesimal. And that is Simon Fisher's word exactly. Now, I've had a student in my violin boot camp ask me, are these different types of vibratos? No, these are the exercises that we use to develop a complete and flexible, a com develop a complete and versatile vibrato. Remember that the more versatile your vibrato, the deeper and wider your palette of sounds will be. And as I said in my previous video, in terms of making the mistake of doing the inappropriate vibrato for the wrong style, this is what you will be able to pull out of your toolbox when you're performing different repertoire. These are my exercises for how to develop a great vibrato. I hope that you try them and I hope that you like them. And if you did, tell me in the comments which one was your favorite. I know I have my personal favorites and maybe I'll share them with you in the comments, but you have to share with me too. So go ahead, like the video, Please share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next video on Violin with Dr. Lynn.